So it said, uh, he, he mentioned the verse about if you're going to die in your sins, right? But in John 8, 24, it says, I said, therefore, unto you that ye shall die in your sins. If what? For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So if you don't believe that Jesus is the son of God, then yeah, you're going to die in your sins. And it makes that crystal clear in 1 John 5 when it says, Who is he that overcometh the world? He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Not whosoever obeys the commandments. Not whosoever stops sinning. Not whosoever lives a good life. Whosoever believeth. So, I mean, if you were to stand before God right now and you're trying to get into heaven, are you going to say, well, you know, I just obeyed the most commandments. I deserve to get in. Well, you're going to hell, buddy. You're going to hell. That's what your uh, your reason to get in is. Um, so you keep saying clearly disproves what you're saying about you know sure. it the revelation, uh, and I'll show you right now. Um, hold on, let me find it on the screen. Believe it, the Jesus, the Son of God, is He that overcometh the world. No, That's this false. idea that it is not about keeping the commandments. Revelation twenty four fourteen makes that in salvation abundant. isn't. It, it, it's a no, free gift. Oh, listen, listen. Yeah, but you it, got to talk salvation. for like an hour. Let me finish. Just I was just finish. responding. The, I, okay, go ahead. Finish. I thought I was in the middle. Of, I I said. Oh, I, I just wanted. I was just stating that. I, I mean, just just let me finish. I'm not trying to be rude. Sorry. I'm just trying to finish because I don't. I'm I'm gonna forget what I'm gonna say. But if our salvation was based off of our behavior, we're all damned. We're all going to hell. Why didn't the Book of John tell us? that he so ever obeys the commandments is going to heaven. So let me ask you this. If I was having a party tonight and I said, hey, it's free. You show up to my door and I say, well, it's free, but everybody else paid $100 to get in. So can you pay $100? Was it free? No, it wasn't free. It's a free gift. You don't have to work for it. Now, this whole thing about Hebrews 10.26 um, being a loss of salvation First of all, it's talking about how, because they used to do animal sacrifices, right? And now, Jesus' sacrifice is once for all. Like it says in Hebrews 10.10, 10, uh, and uh, by the which will we are sanctified uh, by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. You're sanctified once for all. Every single sin is forgiven. Previous, current, and future, all forgiven. doesn't matter if they're little or big. Jesus, Jesus didn't just die for the little tiny sins every single sin now uh it says if you sin willfully right if you're sinning willfully god's gonna punish you for it really badly and you know the reason we ask god for forgiveness if we sin isn't because we think we're gonna lose our salvation right it's because we don't want him to punish us here right that's why it's nothing to do with losing your salvation and hebrews chapter 12 verse 6 can clarify that when it says for whom the lord loveth he chasteneth and scourges every son he receiveth you know you're going to punish your children you're going to correct them with the rod right you're not going to just kick them out hey or you're going to put them in the oven you're not my kids anymore i mean that just sounds like nonsense to me um but another thing i want to touch on is you know king david he committed some of the worst sins out of anybody in the bible right he committed adultery and murder did he lose his salvation? No, he didn't. There's a verse actually in uh, the book of Psalms when he said, restore the, the joy of my salvation. He didn't say restore my salvation, right? So King James, I mean, not King James, King David did not lose his salvation. Commit some of the worst sins. I mean, what sin is it that's going to just make you lose your salvation if that's the case? I mean, how many sins is it? I mean, that, that's the thing. It's like such a gray area. And, it, you know, a lot of these people that are like, don't believe in free grace and once saved, only saved. You know, you notice it's it, Jesus is kind of an afterthought. It's just like, well, I don't sin. I, I keep the commandments. I'm so good. Hey, you just love your sin so much. Who said we love our sin? Who, who said that? That's not true. What I'm saying is that you're not going to lose your salvation if you sin because all comes short of of uh, all of sin and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. And I can even give you so many verses just from the book of Romans that prove that your salvation has nothing to do with your works. Absolutely nothing. And I'll do that real quick, actually. Romans chapter 3. <clears throat> Romans chapter 3. 
see, he's 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 pulled up four different scriptures now, though. You know, I How have am I two. Pulling up four different scriptures? You've jumped from Revelation, Peter, Psalms. So what do you want to talk about in Revelation? It's not. I, I wanted to address the first thing you sp you said like ten minutes ago, right? You said that. Well, no that's fair, Cassidy. Uh, uh, I feel like that was a good stopping point for him to address. And and, and, and that way we don't. Forget. I forgot to mention one thing about what he said about the the parable you know i i 100 believe that's just about somebody who is really backslidden i don't think anything about salvation because it didn't lose his salvation if that's the case if i'm backslidden did i just lose my salvation and, and do i get it back do i just come back to god yes yes that's how that works it's that you see you but just keep it. saying you keep saying that oh you can't lose. You just keep saying that. And so everything you read and believe has to go filter through this funnel that is impossible. But no, the Bible is is, is making it abundantly clear. You can. Yes, you can't lose your salvation. Okay. You say it's not a gray area. The damnable sins are very clearly communicated in the book of Corinthians, in the book of Galatians. Jesus lists um, several of them as well. For unbelievers. These are unbelievers. And then you know what it says in 1 Corinthians 15.50? That no flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of God because your flesh is imperfect. It's sinful. You, you, why does Paul keep reminding us to walk in the spirit, to not fulfill the lust of the flesh? Because your flesh is sinful and it will not inherit the kingdom of God. Only your spirit and soul. Yeah, but if you read the book of Romans, he clearly addresses when he asks, so how will I overcome, um, you know, what a wretched man I am? How will I overcome? He says, through Jesus Christ. And that is Romans chapter um Jesus. 7 verse 24 he says oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death after lamenting for almost an entire chapter about how weak his flesh is he says i thank god through jesus christ our lord so then said? yes so then the mind yes so then with the mind i myself serve the law of god but with the flesh the law of sin then you go to chapter 8 and then he talks about um free from the bondage of sin, right? There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So here we are to, we are told this is the deliverance from bondage. People want to say the law is what the deliverance of bondage that Romans is talking about. No, all right, we are told all throughout the Bible, both by Jesus and in 1 John, that it is he that sins who is a slave to sin. Anyone that sins is a slave to sin. Right. And so there's that. But let me go back. You said um, that, no, you know, you keep mocking this idea that people who think keeping the commandments is important to get into heaven and that God is going to send them to hell for doing what Jesus said to do. If you love him, if you love me, keep my commandments. But Revelation 2, 22, verse 14 says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into that city for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth um, and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David and the bright morning star and the spirit and the bride and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely, right? And so, you know, he makes this abundantly clear, right? The tree of life is what gives you immortality. If you go back to chapter 21, it says it is a tree of life that we will be eaten from for the, for the healing of the nations, right? And it says, look, very clearly, blessed are they, this is verse 20, 20, 14, chapter 22, that do his commandments that they may. So he's connecting them completely uh, come, he's connecting them. He's saying that they're interlinked, right? You do his commandments so that you may have right to the tree of life and you may enter through the gates into that city. Listen, every redeemed, born again um, person that is resurrected on the day of the Lord is going to enter into that city. And so it, it makes it clear that in order to do that, you must keep his commandments. Um, and there are other ways we can get to that point as well. But I'll move on to your other your other 